ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure. So, first of all, I'd like to uh, the thank the Professor Hari Badesha for arranging such a special occasion. Uh, honestly speaking, it is a bit too much for me uh, because <laughs> my seminar will be taken to the other video and then uh, he will uh, think it to put to the internet. So, it was rather high pressure for me. But anyway, uh, last uh, the uh, 20 or 30 years, we have been deeply involved in the brain boundary engineering. Maybe in the near future, that is one of the great uh, uh, topics of the, the new material science field, I think, I we agree. But uh, this time, they actually, my talk was the made about the two years ago uh, for the special international conference the, in honor of the Professor David Brando is also a very pioneer in the field of uh, brain boundary studies. Uh, uh, so on this occasion, the, I, I was invited for keynote, one of the keynote uh, le uh, lecture. So just Christmas time. But anyway, uh, actually I expand th th this uh, lecture uh, for uh, two seminars. So today uh, I'm going to talk about the basic background of brain boundary engineering. And the day after tomorrow, I'll uh, uh, talk about the state of art of brain battle engine. So this the outline of my uh, so outline of my talk. So rather today uh, I'm going to talk up to around this, and then uh, the day after tomorrow I uh, I'll be talk. Anyway, <coughs> historical background of brain battle. Uh, actually, more than the 120 or almost, nobody uh, saw the, uh, looked at the grand boundary in the Alpha because the, the, in the Alpha Polycrystal material, grain is so tiny, so we cannot see the grand boundary so easy. So, uh, at this time, the, uh, the Dr. Sobopi used my optical microscope. At that time, just magnification nine times, and he observed the microstructure in the outbreak of the So this is the first that uh, he reported uh, the, in the journal of the Iron Steel Institute. So, and then, if we look at the carefully, but the feature of the polycrystal the uh, steel, of course, microstructure structure consists the huge number of grains, but some area consists of very rather small grain, and some area is a rather coarse grain. Thus, this means microstructure is not so homogeneous, rather heterogeneous. This is a real the feature of most of the polycrystal material. But uh, anyway, uh, as I'm going to talk later, the sometime to if you study the effect of grain size on the, for example, strength of material, often you use a great average grain size. So what's the physical meaning of average grain size? Rather suspicious, please you will remember. So I think anyway. This thing. So anyway, how the such a uh, polycrystal uh, the microstructure is formed uh, very, uh, very famous the British scientist Rosenheim the he made the what the, uh, model of the formation of microstructure in polycrystal material right? from when we uh, they solidify from the milk maybe so green boundary uh, are formed like this, right? But anyway, important thing, but structure of green boundary between the, the two uh, adjoining grain. This is the, our most important. But anyway, at his time, he proposed maybe the green boundary structure is amorphous-like. Um, but anyway, Later on, the, some people, uh, the, uh, the green boundary, maybe more older structure can occur. So this 
So, depending on the relative orientation between the two grains. So, but anyway, if you look at the real polycrystal material, in this case, the molybdenum polycrystal sample cast uh, the solidified from the melt, as you see the in the bar sample, when we cut the, the sectional uh, area, as you see the, of course, for example, molybdenum consists a huge number of grains. And then you can easily recognize surrounding area, the outer area consists a rather elongated grain structure. But in the middle, of course, rather equi-action grain structure. So there is some difference between the outer uh, part and the inside. So why? Because depending on the processing, when you solidify the, the metal uh, uh, the, from the melt, of course, because of the gradient, of the thermal gradient, firstly, the, this part solidified. So the grain growth occurs from outside side to the inside. And then, in the grain interior, rather more homogeneous solidification occurs. So, microstructure becomes like this. But another important feature, as you see the color, different grain shows a different color. Why? Because this is indicate this indicates surface crystallographic orientation of the surface different from grain to grain. So yellow maybe yellow grain is the surface orientation one or sometimes blue grain maybe one one or like this. So depending on the surface orientation, color is different. So this is another the uh, important feature. Now, if you think about grain band, that means two grain meets at the grain band. So here, if you look at this, yellow grain meets the uh, uh, joint, uh, connected with the blue grain. So this boundary is between the yellow and green. Another boundary, for example, this is the dark blue and green. So this boundary may be different from this, like this, because orientation is different. The relative orientation is different. So like this, in the other polycrystalline material, strictly speaking, maybe there is never same grain band can exist. But anyway, if you say like this, it's very difficult to actually quantify or characterize the brain band. So, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, mention soon later, we have to classify type or character of boundary depending on the relative orientation, misorientation conditions. For a small round boundary, higher, higher round boundary. But anyway, this is a reality in the polycrystal material. So, <coughs> if you characterize, so polycrystal material, even though the level of optical microscope observation, the polycrystalline system are aggregate a large number of grain or crystallized. And another grain we can recognize grain or interface boundary. If uh, interface boundary, if the material is not a single phase, if uh, two phase or mul uh, three multi-phase, that's the boundary that uh, not we not say that grain but Simply speaking, grain band, but the, in that case, we call interface because different phase exists. So in this case, interface band. And then, of course, boundary are connecting to each other in two-dimensional or three-dimensional space. So there is a the connectivity of bound. And then, as, you, as I just mentioned, so grain sites, each grain has a site. So grain site distributed in, in the real polycrystal material, like this. So, grain sites, is a, in other words, just grain band measure of grain band density. So, this is important, and sometimes grain band that contain the voids or cavity, but sometimes they, uh, they uh, accommodate the precipitate like this. This is the real feature. 
of brain temperature. But uh, anyway, when we discuss property of polyvisual material, we have to note as I mentioned, microstructure of polycrystal material. So how does such a main structure or microstructure form is very important when we just discuss property. So very famous scientist, Cyril Stanley Smith, is originally from Brit uh, Brit British, he British. And then he moved, to, uh, the, uh, immigrated to the United States, and then he studied the brain growth phenomena using a bubble, the uh, soap bar. And this, is a, uh, this was taken from the very famous text. And then like this, we can see the house grain growth occur by migration of, in a sense, grain bound. But uh, such a grain bound occurring in the soap bubble is not a real bound. Because in the case of the soap bubble, uh, for example, in this case, surface energy remains constant. But uh, in real friction material, each boundary has its own character, depending on the relative So boundary is not the same. So there's a big difference. But anyway, sometimes it's very easy to just speak of the, to, to give us an imagination how the brain grows. Uh, uh, often we use the soap bubble, and sometimes uh, computer simulation is made, but you should be careful enough. Otherwise, the important is the India crystalline crystal material, individual boundary, and the own boundary energy, not like a soap bubble. This is the important. But anyway, carefully looking at how the sometimes even a few grain grows abnormally. So this is it. we need it. We have been looking for the origin of the abnormal grain growth. Why the abnormal grain growth occurs in uh, recrystallization or some some pro uh, uh, mechanical processing? Still, we didn't know that they they have origin. Sometimes, of course, there are some explanation, but it's still difficult to find the origin. But anyway, we have to know that such a the form mechanism formation of particular material. But anyway, again, we really wish to know the atomistic structure of grain matter. Just not, not like uh, the topological feature. But anyway, if you can uh, look, think about even the single crystal, there are the different crystal uh, the stru uh, structure FCCP, CC, SCP. So if crystal of BCC crystal meets FCC crystal, that's the atomistic structure of internet should be different from the BCC, BCC, the grammar. It's very easy. So when we discuss the, the atomistic structure of interface, we have to, firstly, we have to think about the crystal structure. And then not only the, as I mentioned, relative orientation, disorientation, and no, whether low or high angle bound, even for high angle boundary, depending on the rotation, the relationship, we can construct a very ordered structure. Uh, no, uh, often we call, for example, point sense site lattice model. We call, uh, such a boundary can occur. And also, even for the, the disorientation relationship constant, depending on the boundary inclination, atomic structure can, can be defined like this. So it's not so easy to define, but anyway, soon after the dislocation, the uh, theory was uh, introduced to the physics. Actually, some several the pioneer they worked out the model of grain boundary structure based on the uh, uh, dislocation model, like this. If you put the tilt, uh, the edge dislocation like this, we can form the tilt boundary like this. So if you put the screw dislocation like this, like a network, we can rotate 
the two crystals on the, on the, uh, below or above the screen, just uh, tilt like this, so we can form twist band. So by introducing a tilt or a screw dislocation, we can construct a tilt boundary or twist band, like this. But again, in real frame boundary, not a pure tilt or pure twist can always occur. But they sometimes mix type, which has a tilt component, a twist component, can occur very normally. So we have a um, situation rather complicated, but anyway, we can think about it. And then, so, if we summarize the brief historical the progress of the study of the Grem boundary, and uh, theoretically, experimentally. So if I close up from the 19, uh, 1940 to the 1990, so Kuronberg Wilson proposed the coincide lattice mass. We just briefly called the CSL model of brain boundary. And then this is rather more general the model. Depending on the misorientation angle, at specific misorientation angle, we can get super lattice. So rather, so at boundary, we can expect a rather older structure, not a lattice structure. This is a very basic. And then, so from this, as I already mentioned, Professor Cyril Stanley Smith started the topological approach of the uh, material uh, using a bu bubble wrap sink and also nature's boundary energy experiment very carefully. So this is the base start of basic uh, the, of the green boundary study. And then, so again, the civil model of the green boundary structure we discussed. And the first book on green boundary was published, uh, written by Dr. Donald McLean is now mm, age 90. He was the National Physical Laboratory. So this, uh, the, he, Grim, he wrote a, a, a book titled Grim Boundary, Grim in Meta. This was a very famous textbook now. So this is the start, 1957. And then, like this, so later on, Oh, anyway, to observe the atomistic structure of Grenberg, in the Grenberg, was not so easy in the past. So, at around the ninth, beginning of the 1960, here at the University of Cambridge, several people, the, at that time, uh, maybe I think uh, uh, David Smith at that time was in Cambridge and moved to the Oxford area. But anyway, they try to observe the atomistic structure of brain pattern using a field uh, ion microscope. But uh, it was not so easy. But uh, anyway, later, uh, the transmission electron microscope was uh, they invented. And then, since 1970, many people use transmission electron microscope to observe the atomistic structure like this, from this. Particularly, the, at MIT, our corner, the SAS Professor Barofi's group first observed atomistic structure of red using a high resolution. And they, uh, the theoretical uh, area, the Dr. Bolman proposed all of this the uh, DSC lattice theory, which can predict the Burgess vector or dislocation, uh, vector of dislocation or dislocation vector in grain. This was the test at this time. And then, so anyway, uh, actually, I myself was a bit involved at the, from the data, the <coughs> how to control the Grain boundary microstructure in particular matter around the beginning of 1980, around the right. So my talk uh, today or uh, next time 
with that, about from this year. But uh, before this, actually from this 1970, we studied the effect of boundary structure on brain boundary property using a bicrystal sample. So before up to this, we already spent nearly 20 years to study the effect of boundary structure on brain boundary property. On the basis of such a basic study, we can propose such a the idea. Anyway, again, about our pioneer, Professor B. Oost, he was the University of Toronto, and he is still very well uh, active in the field of brain boundary. But anyway, they, they are both pioneers in the field of brain boundary. And then, as I mentioned, Dr. Donald McLean is the, now uh, uh, this year, uh, 90 years old, okay, well. But anyway, we have, we have such a pioneer. Because anyway, to observe the brain boundary by field ion microscope, here the brain boundary, so you can recognize some um, gap between around us, between like this and uh, this. So this indicates, oh, sorry, 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 around here. <laughs> Can you read over Above it. So this being cut here and uh, is not continuous. Anyway, and then by when we observe the grain boundary by transition electron microscope, Often, maybe some of you already observed such a the microstructure using a very frequent after deformation or annealing. Here the brain boundary. And then if you look at very carefully, can you recognize that the very fine line structure in this direction? in addition to the very strong image of this location. Because this strong uh, image, it, we call lattice dislocation, which moves from wrong interior to impinge the brain bump. So this uh, strong dark line is lattice dislocation, which has a big spectrum of lattice. The, it's a uh, dislocation. But uh, here, very fine line, very fine line, contrast is very weak. This means Burgess big is very small, much smaller compared to this from diffraction theory. So anyway, and uh, this the uh, fine structure is very regular at constant the uh, spacing. But here, the lattice location ar arrangement is very irregular because slip plane is not so homogeneous. So uh, the dislocation comes here, and uh, the pile up occurs like this. Um, this is the image. But anyway, so we can calculate or we can determine the Burgos vector of such grim boundary structure dislocation using a DSC lattice. Because DSC lattice is like this, we can determine like that. This is coincidence lattice, which we can construct from the, the, the to produce a uh, super lattice by rotating a two prism. Later, I will demonstrate. And then, See, this lattice is sub lattice of the this lattice, which penetrates atom or existing atom like that. So this is the DST part. So if we shift to the this Burgos vector, we can match the atom between the uh, the uh, at, uh, the lattice the atom below the screen and above the by shifting like this. This is the DSC vector. Anyway, so if you look at the 
イメージ of the Kremlin, リアルクレムランド。In this case, I think、uh, the, that's the cold.、Uh, this was published about 20 years ago. But anyway, such a regular structure. Not only low angle, but high angle boundary as well. So, such a periodic structure can occur even higher. In this case, this, these boundaries have the relative orientation. Learn with a deviate, slightly deviate from exact coincidence orientation. So, we can get this. As you can see from high resolution, periodic structure, you can. Here, rather more loose packed area, rather periodically. This is the age of the Grand Boundary Mind. Not only metallic material, nowadays we can even the ceramic, this is just two years or three years ago, even the ceramics, Grand Boundary, we can observe like this. So now, Grand Boundary atomic structure, a lot of more general studies or observe not only metallic material, even for some semiconductor as well. So, <clears throat> depending on the such an atomistic structure, boundary energy can change as a function of misorientation number. And、uh, in the case of the pure tilt boundary, Using a, in the case of b i c r e s a sample, we can determine the power and the energy like that. But、uh, normally, in the case of metallic material, rather the, we, we define the、uh, coincidence boundary by the sigma, that's the、uh, Greek number, the letter sigma, and the number which Indicates the degree of order. So, with degree of sigma value, the, that's boundary search means more order can work. Anyway, such as sigma 3 boundary, this is normally what we call the three boundary, so many of them, rather have a low energy boundary. But in the case of the, the, the ceramics boundary, it's not such a geometrical characterization, it's not sufficient. More the Ion charge,、uh, such an electronic, this kind of is necessary. But anyway, in addition to this, also boundary inclination is very important. Even here, the one grain, there the another grain, like this. So, depending on the inclination, relative orientation is remain constant, but depending on the inclination, as you see, the boundary structure. Here, the more straight field exists, like this. But anyway, please remember, Professor, both of them, except for this,、uh, the both of them contribute such an observation, atomic structure of observation of real Grand Boundary. Professor Oyoichi Ishida and David Smith, Professor David Smith, but、uh, unfortunately, both of them died in 1996. After this conference. So it was very pity. Actually, he died at just age、uh, 60. He died 50 years before, like this. So it was very pity. We, we lost such a good time. Anyway, to characterize the Grand Band, particularly when we, we characterize the coincidence, special coincidence boundary one, as I mentioned before, Professor Brandon or Professor Danielson, both are still active. Next year, February or March, in the United at the TMS meeting, the special conference, international conference, will be、uh, held in honor of Professor Brandon, birthday 1970、uh, years old. Anyway, we can theoretically predict the what's the Missouri, relative misorientation angle the, at which the special coincidence relative orientation can occur theoretically. So, Langner's proposal model、uh, 
and using depending on the rotation axis, and then we can predict the signal value of order of the axis. And then how much we can allow the deviation from that exact the constant deviations if the, the result deviate from it. The Professor Brandon gave, gave us the, some criteria. So nowadays, as I'm going to show, we nowadays we can characterize the brand individual brand panel in the polycrystal material by using a very most advanced microscope, orientation imaging microscope. The instrument is the same. So automatically or fully computerized the uh, machine characterize the individual band. But in that case, of course, not the exact the coincidence or even there is some deviation was allowed, uh, allowed depending on this kind. So this is the difference. But anyway, no. so now in the case of orientation imaging microscope. Such a table is already uh, was taken in the, comp the, the calculation. This is a background. So you have to remember that. But anyway, so uh, now again, I just showed the depending on the sigma value. That means order, the, the depending difference of, of degree of order of the regular structure, the order structure, the existing grain boundary uh, dislocate, Perg's vector can be different. With increasing at this value, Perg's vector of the grain boundary uh, structure dislocate becomes smaller. So that means more faint the image we can observe at the further larger signal. But a smaller signal, more order structure case, we can observe, uh, for example, in this case, sigma, sigma, more, a uh, much stronger image for the, the structure dislocation. So sometimes we can recognize whether the, this uh, special boundary or fine structure boundary should be the larger, large sigma point boundary or small boundary. we can but anyway, now, next part, my book, on the basis of the, such a, on the basis of the basic knowledge of Grenbach structure, we have to study relationship between the boundary structure and the boundary property. Because depending on the boundary structure, I think behavior of individual boundary can be different. Just like in our human society, because of personality of your, each of you, I think behavior is strongly different. So, uh, like this. So we have to uh, know about the mechanical property of grain boundary, or a chemical property, or electric property, or magnetic property, or thermal property. All these properties is based of Bulk property or polycrystal property. So without knowing such a basic knowledge, we cannot design or we cannot produce any bulk property, I think. If you do some just, you have to do that, try and there. So we need some established knowledge to design the polycrystal property. Anyway, this is one of the simple demonstrations if you take iron chromium alloy, just this is the heretic, the standard steel composition, and the corrodes in the acid solution. So grain boundary are corroded like this. But not all boundary are similarly corroded. This is the boundary that was heavily corroded. This is the secondary corrode, heavily corroded. This is a very resistant corrode. Why? Because, as, as you know, 
boundary, bound, depending on the boundary energy, such a corrosion can be a phenomena can be affected. So what's the order of boundary energy? In this case, we had better think about the dihedral angle. Because of the boundary energy, just signal the surface stage. So at the triple junction, if the this boundary energy very low, this angle must be larger than other other energy. So automatically, this boundary has a large, a small dihedral angle, means higher boundary. And then this is a secondary, this is the, the lowest, very simple. If you look at this, such a microstructure, you can imagine roughly to some extent. Like this, but it's not sufficient. We have to characterize. You know? But anyway, important thing, depending on the boundary or energy or boundary character, uh, behavior, corrosion behavior, quite different. Yes. But anyway, so nearly 30 years ago, to characterize the Graham boundary, we use a scanning electron microscope equipped with the electron channel pattern. This is what at that time, most advanced technique. But uh, that means you ha had to spend uh, so many hours to characterize by hand. Firstly, you have to take the microglove and then characterize that by hand or relative orientation, maybe using uh, some computer. Or of course, later on, we use uh, the computer, large scale computer, but anyway, hand. But Anyway, this was, but uh, image was the same as the recent OI case. Depending on the crystallographic orientation, as you see, just the, uh, we call the electron channel, just ordinary uh, diffraction pattern of the image like this. Depending on orientation in the case of the one uh, uh, surface, we can four-fold uh, four pattern like this. In the case of uh, one, one, one uh, in this case, oh yes, uh, one one plane, we can get the threefold uh, symmetry image like this. So, using such pattern, of course, the ordinary grain tilted from the, such exact orientation. But anyway, we can get. So taking a such a pattern from individual grain, we can determine the relative orientation. So example, this is the same image, and this is the uh, ECP image. Here is the grain boundary. And then you can see this pole move to this pole, up to this. This means about 10 degree. So here is the grain boundary. This means two crystal relatively rotate by 10 degrees from this. So this is a uh, tilt bar. So we can create an image very But anyway, to demonstrate more clearly, I'll just uh, So how to construct these lattice? Relatively rotate the two crystal, cubic crystal. So as you see, if we rotate, relatively rotate the two single cubic single crystal, or one O one plane, along the this direction, at by angle 30 and nearly 36.87, we can construct such a super lattice. So each lattice, if you count the green or uh, let uh, the atom one, two, three, four, and one fourth, one fourth, four times. So, so in this unit cell, we can find five the atom, but here on the super lattice corner, we can. So one fifth is coincident. Two that. Like this. So depending on the relative. Rotation, again, another relative and rotation. 
in this case, if you turn it more by 61, uh, about 60 degree, you can construct such a large superabundance. And in this case, you can count about 17 atom inside, but only corner one of 70s, one 70s can coincide. Like so as you can easily imagine, with increasing cell size, order of the such a constant density is decreased. This means all because this is a bound bound. So the order structure is rather the less order structure occurred with increasing the signal. So this is the simple demonstration of the Now, this is the basis of the brain boundary study. So nowadays, as I mentioned, fully automated orientation imaging microscope now we can use this. So if you use a field emission gun, actually we are using a field emission gun for since the last 10 years. Actually, here, uh, Dr. Uh, Kobayashi uh, was, uh, 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 was using the, this machine for many years, so maybe I'll show the data with uh, some microgram which he took the jerky. <coughs> and then, so, uh, but uh, now the, uh, our machine is getting older. And so you, uh, maybe here, you have a most modern uh, uh, the EBSD microscope, it's whole. But uh, anyway, it's based, the principle is the same. Taking uh, the, uh, the pattern from the neighboring brain, we can characterize the boundary, relative orientation, and then characterize the boundary, and then we can make a map, uh, the draw the map, and uh, how the different boundaries are connecting to each other very easily. So <coughs> this is a recent thing. So at our laboratory, not only metallic, but even ceramics, and we can determine the like this. Please look at, this is the two micron, so here, maybe not 0.5 micro, maybe we can characterize the orientation and power. But uh, anyway, as you know, the recent, many people become very interested in the nanocrystal material. So we have to characterize more fine or nanograin or fine grains for the material. Anyway, in that case, why still uh, we can use? So even the second, so, Maybe. So this is a decent situation of experimental observation of them. So on the basis of such observation, we can know the the grain boundary microstructure existing in young polymer. But anyway, just I another five minutes, I have to show the some structure-dependent property of grain For example, when you deform the polyphenol sample at a high temperature, boundary can play important role. Sometimes, boundary migration can occur under stress or grain boundary sliding occurs. So this boundary slides relatively to like this, because here is the original scratch, scratch shift, uh, displays like this, this means Grain boundary sliding occurred like this. And then, normally, at high temperature deformation, such a sliding causes intergranular fracture at the, the triple junction. So, this is very important. And also, mechanism of super lattice is based on the such as the grain boundary sliding. So, to discuss the super plastic mechanism or uh, fracture mechanism occurring at the high temperature, we have to know the Rembrandt slide behavior. And also, again, for grain structure formation evolution, or uh, the often the very important uh, the, uh, key parameter is the grain boundary migration. Because during the grain growth, boundary have to move. So this is the very basic matter. But again, very old uh, the work from the host group, depending on the type 
type of boundary. If you put the impurity, boundary uh, migration behavior, quite different. So special process boundary is not so strongly affected by impurity, but a high energy random boundary can be drastically affected, retarded very drastically. So there is such a big difference. So how we can control the microstructure, also we have to know the that the effects of the impurity on grandmother segregation. But anyway, so again, for example, even the hardness, if you put the indentation on the grain boundary, grain boundary hardness can change like this. is the new bike stop, and some special boundary shows up very low. So in their polycrystal material, such a different boundary can the grain boundary behavior can be submitted or agglomerated. And then if you discuss on the average, you ignore such a special effects. But if you more carefully take into account such a different behavior, you can produce different political materials. This is the idea. Some, Sometimes, of course, boundary uh, uh, structure uh, can affect the very drastic quite number, even at high temperature as, a, as, a, as, a, as you know the boundary will stop the dislocation movement but uh, again depending on boundary structure such as uh, the effectiveness of green boundary barrier at dislocation movement quite different this is one of the example. At triple junction, this boundary is this boundary, random boundary, and this one the coincidence boundary. So this location moved during a high temperature deformation in aluminum. And as you can see, here this location this location was absorbed very easy. But here this location cannot absorb. So this means special boundary can strong barrier to this location. So this can be used for the increase of improvement of creep strengths at height. Actually, that's what succeeded recently. So like this, and then even the grain boundary sliding, another one minute, sorry. If you use a bike a sample and put a, here the boundary, the scratch and you can measure the directly and uh, if you change the disorientation and systematically you can determine the, how the boundary sliding behavior change depending on disorientation. So lower boundary are very difficult to slide but with increasing the disorientation boundary sliding becomes easy. But even at higher angle boundary at coincidence boundary so depending on the boundary type, so this produce in heterogeneity in the brain boundary behavior in polycrystal. So you have to consider the such different different role of brain boundary in your polycrystal. So this is again basic knowledge of brain boundary engineering. So I just also sometimes grammar sliding behavior uh, ch uh, changed at certain temperature. We call grammar the structure transformation. Because if you increase temperature, that means we shake the atom. So even at the same misorientation angle, local uh, atomic st uh, the structure cannot be remain same. This is a grain matter structure. So under the like this. So anyway, we need to know the, such a basic knowledge. But anyway, this today I just mentioned our uh, basic knowledge until we know the uh, e center. But uh, anyway, we, we can use such a basic knowledge for engineering the real polycrystal material for which has a uh, desirable property and high performance. 
this is a basic idea. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much uh, for the excellent lecture and for keeping to time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very good. <laughs> Any questions? It would seem to be that the, the Sigma 9 grain boundaries, they can't slide as good as the others. Why is that? Uh, compared to the high energy button? The question is the Sigma 9 button. Sigma 9 button. Can't slide as cannot slide. easily as. And, yes, exactly. There was deep. Uh, that's right. Cannot slide. Yeah, gap in the, in the, in the sliding behavior. But compared yeah, with exactly, what? exactly with 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 the other uh, grain boundaries, maybe we can show the graph again that the exactly. this one, yeah, that, this one, yeah, that at fifty six degree, uh, uh, if the grain the grains are orient misoriented, sixty five degree, degree. Uh, fifty six degree, then they, they can't slide. Why is that? No, why? What? Because order structure exists. This is the coincidence sigma nine coincidence band. Oh, good mechanics. You are interested in mechanism. Yes. Okay. Because in this case, they again uh, depend on the mechanism of sliding. Because lattice location is taken in the boundary and they move along the boundary. In this case, of course, this bound, uh, as I already mentioned, in the case of aluminium, coincidence boundary is it, very difficult to absorb the dislocation from gray in there. Because for the absorption process of lattice location at the boundary, you need diffusion control process. Cla because Vegas vector is not in the boundary plane. So climb and glide is necessary. So in this case, again, boundary, uh, green boundary diffusion is very difficult also. So at, that's the more general knowledge now, compared to the high energy boundary. Because you can easily imagine which is easier, old at gap boundary, the diffusion is easier, old at the structure or disordered structure. Disordered structure, in the disordered structure, maybe diffusion of atom can easily occur compared to the ordered structure. That's a very simple thing. So such an ordered boundary, diffusion, very difficult. So dislocation, lattice dislocation cannot take into boundary and cannot move, uh, move along the boundary. Because the Berg spectre, which they are the component of Berg, Berg spectre of the Latin location, in around the boundary, produce the plane of sight. This is a mechanism. Simple. Are you actually asking about, say, sigma 3 and so forth, or, or just the sigma so 9? I mean, it seems to be the sigma 9 seems to be a special, like a magic number or something. It's but it's a sliding hard curve or something. For, for this, this is a hexagonal system. Ah. Yeah. Okay. And for this particular delta axis, there isn't another sigma value before you get to that. Uh, yeah, but you can you look on another delta axis. Because you know, depending on rotation axis, actually sigma nine is the lowest or smallest sigma bound sigma four one one one. Okay, of no, course, no, no, there is another. Uh, I don't remember the thirty or twenty five or something like this. But anyway, this is the lowest. Okay, I understand. You see. You are interested in free check this paper. I discussed the difference. <laughs> Any more questions? So I have one. You oh, yes. have your plot of uh, energy versus sigma for the zirconia. Oh, yes. How do you actually measure the energy? Uh, uh, they use the bicrystal sample and then from dihedral angle. But uh, you need a reference uh, you, or? Oh, Yes, maybe I should. Just a minute. Absolutely. Just a minute. Mm. Here, this is a, some relative to a twin boundary or some, I, I think. I'm oh, sorry, I that anyway, they published the special issue of French Journal, and now in the, the upper city, I edited. Solid line in this graph is this actually a theory or is it just a trace right? like this? Oh, I think. Oh, it's a trace, not theoretical. But uh, you know, yeah, uh, actually, you, we, we had better carefully look at it because even for sigma, same sigma relative orientation, a value is different. But uh, of course, depending on the you have to take into account grain boundary, plane. The, uh, the crystal graph also. 
because depending on the Missouri, this is a different boundary in the uh, inclination. So atomistic configuration different. So that's also mean in the case of ceramics. The electronic state is or charge in the Well, if there are no other questions, uh, the second lecture will be day after tomorrow, 4 o'clock over here.